Hey. All right. Well, um, listen, we're here and we're five minutes early. Um, but if you want, we can go ahead and get this shit started. Goodbye, mate. Let's get it cracking. Let's get it cracking. All right. Well, let me see here. I I'm going to Twitter over my screens. <laughs> right. I, I've been trying to figure out what I can close so I'm not so distracted as well. <laughs> All right. So I was going to have, I like to have music playing when I talk, but for this, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do that. You and I having an honest conversation about, um, why some things suck and why some things don't. It's <laughs> a good way to put it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I believe it's like maybe two people here. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get this shit started. So what's going on, y'all? We are the design critics. This is episode one. Um, it's really, it's not quite episode one. We We recorded a few episodes of this earlier in the year. But it wasn't quite like this, and we never really rolled it out, and so we're calling those prototypes. Um, but this is the the real official one. We're sharing it th with the world. So whoever is out there, uh, you're the first. You should be honored. Um, but yeah, we're the design critics. Uh, we are pretty much going to talk to you guys about uh, pretty much the world from the perspective of designers. Um, Scott and I share a lot of common interests. So uh, we're going to be talking a lot about video games, a lot about software and hardware and the things uh, that we feel work about them and the things that we feel don't. And obviously, these are views that we hold for ourselves. They are not shared amongst any group of people or organization. Um, they are ours and ours only, but you are free to share them with us. And nothing is an absolute group. I'm always going to have my mind, mind changed. Mm -hmm. I love it. Cool, man. Well, um, Scott, if you would like to do the honors, I would I would like for you to uh, introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about who you are and and why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, um, do you, do you, do you see, see my name, my name down, down there, Scott Gerstel? I've been, been a UX, UX designer, designer for a handful, handful of years. years. Been in the, in the tech, tech world, world for a few years, years before, before that, that, and did a and bunch, bunch of other stuff, stuff before that. that. Um, so, so I guess, I guess that's my, my qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah, yeah, and I'm into, into like Ray said, you know, we, we share sure common interest in video games, um, and music, music. Uh, playing Play music, music, listening to music, music. Uh, um, and then I'm also into some, some other stuff, stuff like bikes, like cars, cars, what have what you. you. Hell yeah. Cool, man. Um, oh, also, uh, Shay Neo Mac, I saw that you followed. Uh, I appreciate the love, sir. Hopefully you're still out there. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and yeah, uh, in case you don't know, I'm Ray Mills. Um, I have been designing professionally for about five years. Um, that's been, yeah, it's been about five years now. And um, I spent three of those years working with Scott and we, uh, we spent a lot of time figuring out uh, where we fall. As fr I mean, we, we just spent so much time talking about design stuff and like you know video games software that we use and um applying what we learn and you know use every day in our jobs to um you know these pieces of software and hardware that we use every day and then you know we talk about how much better or worse these things would be if they did some of the things we talk about instead of the things that they put in their their software their hardware themselves um and so but yeah uh we uh we spend a lot of time designing and it's usually interfaces um but uh we, we we dabble where we see fit so i know scott will uh get a lot into like you know video editing when it's necessary or you know yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. go where the wind takes us if you will but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Video, video editing or mm -hmm. yeah audio putting audio together recording mm -hmm. audio, audio is the one for me mm-hmm mm -hmm. You actually been making music recently as well, kind or getting into that kind of. Yeah, habit. actually, I, I've, I've actually been using um, um, less so, so recording, recording and more so using, using the computer and recording myself, myself as a critical, critical tool. tool. Um, because, because I find that when playing, playing music, music uh, I, I hear, hear it, it and I 
I'm playing it here in the moment, moment mm -hmm. and it, you know, you like know, anything, it, it just it happens in the moment, moment and it passes. And, passes. and uh, as, as a player, player, you feel you a certain, certain way about what you're playing. playing. Um, but, but I think, I think for, myself, for myself, at least, least when, when I play, I play um, particularly because I'm, I'm not great, great right? right? I'm, like, I'm, I'm not an accomplished, accomplished not an accomplished or professional, professional or live musician. musician. I'm just of a bedroom musician, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so. Uh, I have in, in my, my head, head the thing I want to hear, and it doesn't always, always come out in my playing, playing, but I kind of have it in my head anyway. Right. So, so uh, I can I overlook, overlook things, things when I'm playing and listening, but when, when I record it, play it back to myself, I hear the things that I'm getting wrong or that I'm missing or could add or improve to this, so whatever it was I was playing. So, you know, it's the same as like if you're trying to teach yourself to be a better conversationalist, you record your conversations and see, like, oh, I sound funny when I talk about this or whatever it is, right? Yeah. I never actually heard about audio, like, software being used to make you a better speaker or just a better, a better player, just like, you know, because I guess I do that as well. Like, you know, I'll. I'll rewatch my Twitch streams to like sure. maybe listen to how I sound or maybe review my gameplay. And it's for the sake of getting better, not, you know, not for the sake of putting it on some demo reel for the world to see, but it's like, okay, I could have done that better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's no different than uh, going, going back and looking at one of your old designs, designs, right? And you're like, geez, well, so I would have done, 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 done this, I would have done that. But that's what's the benefit of looking at it after the fact, or in the case of music, listening to it after the fact. So this was like, was this something you really started getting into with your new equipment? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so I bought uh, an audio uh, interface, um, which you and I were talking about a little earlier. But, um, I bought a really real expensive $109 on, on, what did I get it from? Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Okay. And, and, and uh, it's a Native, Native Instruments, Instruments Complete Audio, audio one. one. And it's just, it's just a single, single mic, mic input. input. Uh, and, and a single instrument, instrument input, input, you know, quarter inch jack, or like, like guitar cable, right? Um, and then and you then can switch, switch it between a line and an instrument input, input, whatever. And it has, you know, whatever, it has a bunch of other features. Too. Uh, but all it is, is basically an external sound card. You plug into USB, USB uh, and it has some inputs on it, right? So I can plug my guitar into it, feed it into the computer. Uh, uh, in, in which, which case you can run some software, software that simulates that amplifiers, amplifiers and speaker cabinets and effects pedals and all, and all that good stuff. stuff. And you can feed that then into, or use it as a plug in and hook it up to a DAW or a digital audio, audio workstation. Okay. Um, so in my so case, he's in Ableton Live. Live. And uh, what is that? Yeah, it feeds right in. What's that? What is Ableton Live? Yeah, Ab yeah so Ableton Live is one of these DAWs. Digital audio, audio workstation. Works. I think that's what that stands for. Okay. So that's uh, so you can you just you can record, record tracks. tracks. Um, as, okay. And so as many as you have inputs for. So in so my case, I've got a mic and a. Well, actually, I don't have a microphone. I just have the input, input for a microphone, and then a guitarist we can plug in there, and I can get that in, and it can I can process that audio in any which way. I could even I could even just record the dry signal and then process the audio after the fact, which is kind of cool too. What made you get, so did you buy the audio interface because you just wanted to hear how you sounded when you play? Like, no, nope, I got it, it so, so I could play around with recording. recording. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, well okay, okay, there are two, two reasons. reasons. <laughs> One was I, got, I wanted to, to get, uh, get into the recording and see, you know, see what that's like. I have some other instruments in here. I got a bit, um, little analog synthesizer that I want to play with a little bit more and all that stuff. So that was, that was one reason to get it. Another reason to get it was that I was dealing with a really bad humming out of my, out of my speaker system. And I had trouble shot that down to being some kind of like grounding issue. And I, it's a grounding issue on the motherboard or something. I was always able to fix it with any other means. So I was like, all right, you know, one way I know we'll fix this is if I, don't use the onboard audio and, and have an external audio processing source. So I first started looking into US, just USB sound cards or external sound cards. And I guess um, someone out there, I forget. Sound Blaster. Yeah, there's a Sound Blaster set of cards, external ones that are pretty, pretty well reviewed and apparently pretty nice. But then I, then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> 
What about an audio interface? interface? It does the same thing, right? right? It's like your output, you output, you output, output a signal huh. from that device to whatever is creating sound, sound, right? right? Whether it be powered, powered speakers, speakers or a stereo or system or whatever. So, so uh, it, did it did indeed, indeed solve, solve my problem. problem. In fact, so when, when, when I have the volume cranked, cranked and there's and nothing playing, play, dead sound. Not a, not a not hiss, not nothing. nothing. That's beautiful. It's it's awesome. And then what was what else is great about it is, is it seemed to push a clean, a much cleaner audio signal too. So, um, you know, with a good set of speakers and a subwoofer, it sounds amazing. It's, everything's crystal clear. If I play flat files, it's pure heaven. That's oh, so this is like you're not even talking about your guitar, like it, it producing a better guitar sound. It just produces a better sound across the board. Primarily, I'm just talking about yeah, yeah, anything you listen to on your computer. Oh, I didn't know that. Had I, had I known no bypassing crappy on board board audio, audio would have made such, such an improvement improved. in the audio, audio fidelity, fidelity and the sound quality, I would yeah. have done it even ago. It's strange because, like, sound, like, dedicated sound hardware was really, like, in, like, 10, 15 years ago. Like, you mm -hmm. wouldn't like most people that took their computers set up seriously wouldn't be caught dead with like onboard drivers but um somehow like that that went away like i'm i'm not sure exactly what what caused like dedicated sound like audio like dedicated pc audio like sound blasters that will put in like surround or whatever i don't know why that went away i, I, I suspect it's just because the onboard audio, audio got, got good, good enough, enough. <laughs> yeah know? It is it good is enough for, for most uses, uses. And, and, and it is in, mo in most, most cases. Mine happened to be crap, crap so, so. <laughs> fix it. Do you use WinApp? Um, no. no. But, but that being that said, I do have it installed <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling, man. I, I had, a, I had to ask because, it's like, if you're talking flak files, it's like I, I know this man. It's, uh, when's the last time you opened it? Actually, Actually so, yeah, yeah, when I open the Flack files, files it's, it's opening my app. So, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy that that shit's still getting supported. It's, it's nuts. nuts. It's nuts. Uh, you know, you know and it's one of those, one those things, things where, where it's, it's such, such a simple, simple program. program. It just, just you, you, you open, open the files, files and put them in the playlist, and you play, and you play, and you get your playback controls. And it works. Yeah, it didn't have to be all. It doesn't have to be all complicated. It looks old school. Old school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks really classic. It um, <laughs> now it just has like a vintage charm to it. Yeah, I guess it's definitely about at that retro nostalgia age. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking of um, like I didn't even think of the classic Winamp UI when I mentioned it. Like the only thing, like. <laughs> Every single time I had WinApp installed, the first thing I would do is put like some crazy impractical skin on it that slowed down my computer. Yep. yep. You know, you know I, uh, uh, with uh, WinApp skins, skins, that's that's, that's a, a good, good example piece. of one of those one of early, early things, things that I obsessed over. over. <laughs> like along with my my <laughs> desktop, desktop setup. setup. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, you know minimal you know, uh, minimal icons and get the right, right wallpaper and, and then you know. In Windows, Windows 95, 95, for example, where you, you, you could change, change the color, the color of everything. Yeah, like, drop drop drop. should be green. <laughs> oh, your cursor should be bright yellow. <laughs> right. So, so I would go through and tweak all, all that stuff. stuff. But anyway, yeah, in yeah, Winamp was another this, this, this prime, prime example of where, where I was, I was like, like, I was hunting for the, the best, best user, user experience. experience. I didn't even I didn't know, know I didn't even know that combo of words. Right. I was just like, like something that's clear here to read easy, easy to, to find the buttons i want to lay down in a, in a clear, clear fashion and i you know something, something that, looks that looks cool, cool on top of it all but, but uh and, you know yeah, when i'm skin is there there's a <laughs> you, you, you have to sift through a lot, lot to find something good yeah they're usually just like art projects yeah exactly yep yeah. yeah i always look at the back of the, just the classic when i'm skin uh-huh Man, you know that that makes me want or think about like um I've been talking a lot with my friends about like what like the difference in like art and design and if there is a difference and like um maybe where you could see like something that might be considered art um 
in like maybe specifically in the realm of video games, right? Um, you have all of these amazing video games that are kind of really hindered by terrible user experiences. Um, but but the art looks good enough so people don't necessarily complain about the terrible user experience so much. Um, and uh, what like what was an example I used? Like, say like you have Resident Evil, a game like Resident Evil 2 that goes out of its way to get out of your way. Um, and it's like, as a game and as an art piece, it holds up, but like it is hyper catered to the people that are going to be receiving it. So like, you know, the, the, the lowest common denominator is probably some guy that has never played resident evil before, but's probably heard of it. Maybe he's played video games before. So make it easy for that person to get into. Um, then you have a game like, I don't know, death stranding where it's like two hour cutscenes, And it's like, I don't really give a shit what you're expecting to get into. You're in my world now. <laughs> <laughs> or like you know the like the overcrowded interface of like you know you have games like the division or like any ubisoft game that just is packed with all of these systems in the game just like mm -hmm. you know it's just gonna you know it's gonna stay in your way and it's gonna remind you of the you know these here's a tutorial for this new system that we just implemented and also you can you can find these five objectives all the way over here you can also find these 30 objectives over here and we're gonna tell you exactly where to go and exactly how to beat the boss, but you know, but we're gonna put those in in paragraphs. We're not gonna figure out any intuitive way to you know introduce these things to you. It's just like block of text. And yeah, man, yeah, put, put the game for a while and then go back to it, however long later, later, and be like, damn, damn I have to relearn all the inputs all, all over again because some of them, you know, they get some complex like that. Monster Hunter. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I spent, spent like, like, I don't know, I don't know how, how, like, I played, played with, with you once. once. Uh -huh. like, we, at that time that we played, right, right. That was that time I haven't played since. since. And, and to think about having to go back, back now and, and figure, figure out, out what the what hell it was, was that I was, was doing then. No idea. You gotta start over. Yeah, basically. Yeah, right, right. It's like the whole, like, the, the, the hub world. I never even fully grasped the hub world when I played it. It's like, mm -hmm. you have this area, and in this area, you have to go to the like the northwest on the second floor of five floors to like go to your next mission mm -hmm. or you have to go to like you know a a bulletin board to access co-op but you have to post that you want some people to join you but you can't go out into the world before they join you and it's, it's like oh see i never got into those games yeah, yeah. I, I had a little stint with warcraft, warcraft and i, I uh, uh I didn't, I didn't go, go. I didn't go into it. My brother, brother was super into it, like, like for years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where he's got a collection of leveled up characters and everything. That's, um, and you know, those games are probably magical once you get past the the learning curve. But, he, he, yeah, yeah, well, I think it's one of those, those, one of those things, things where you, 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 you got to get a good raid group. group you know, you, know, you, you got to have, like, people you play with. Because if you just hop in on random raids all the time, you're going to get a bunch of chuckle, you know, a bunch of these right Yeah. Uh huh. And then you're screwed. You know, you're not gonna have a good time. Mm hmm. But he he, he had, had a, like a, a crew that he, he would he would go raiding with, with on the regular. And that, and that was, was he. I mean, he, he talked. talked to, I mean, they would talk, talk about all sorts, sorts of stuff. stuff, stuff you, know, you know, like all family, family stuff. stuff. They, they, they'll, they'll know each other, other intimately, mm -hmm. despite you know, and just just playing the game. And uh, I mean, that adds a huge amount to your your enjoyment of it, right? And you don't have to learn so much on your own. Like you have, you know, your buddies to tell you like, like Sea of Thieves is actually, that reminds me of Sea of Thieves. Like does, Sea of Thieves was kind of designed around not holding your hand. Um, mm -hmm. So like that game has like all of these systems where it's like, they're really, really ambiguous when you get into the game because like, you know, you're expected to go, you know, communicate with people. And so like, you can't have you can't be a part of a four man ship if you don't know how to steer the boat. But the game doesn't tell you how to do that. You have to find somebody in the game that's willing to explain it to you. Yeah, yeah, interesting. yeah. I do, uh, I do like games like with, with really, really minimal, minimal like, like heads up display, display stuff, stuff, like, like minimal, minimal um, um, like I like the high training, training, you know. Yes. Oh. Uh, 
what was, what was uh, uh, Hellblade, Hellblade kind of did that really well. Oh well, uh, yeah, like, it was, they, they're never, they never give you anything. Like, like it's all it's, it's all, all just. just yeah, I think they, they might. They, I don't know. Is there even? even I can't remember now. It's been a while, but maybe they tell you in the first fight, fight like like what what the press, and then that's it. The whole game. game. I don't think they do actually. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's super minimal. Yeah, yeah, you just have to kind of wander your way around. around. <laughs> and, uh, that game really, <laughs> really <laughs> headphones really <laughs> helpful with that because it's all it's binaural, binaural audio. audio so, and the directionality of things can make a difference sometimes. But. Apparently, uh, the fact that they were able to do that was revolutionary. Because like that effect apparently is really hard to to get without actually having dedicated surround equipment. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, so they, they, yeah, the equipment, equipment they used to record, record binaural, binaural audio, audio is really, really wild. wild. There, 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 it? Mm -mm, you told me about it before. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's like a head. head. It's like it's literally, literally a head, head with ears, ears and the ears, ears are soft. Are uh, they're, they're made, made of like rubber material, material so, so that they, they replicate. replicate. And the microphones are inside. So the microphones are inside. inside. Your eardrums are inside your head. Yeah, yeah. So, so the whole, the whole idea is that when audio, audio comes from, from the in, front in front of you, behind you, you or, or to the side of you, you, it takes a different, different path, bouncing around your your, your your outer ear to get to, get to your inner ear. And so that difference in sound, the way that you know it comes, you know whether whether your ear blocks some of the sound coming from behind you. Uh huh. All, all, all those principles, principles uh, were, were reaching, reaching the limit, rapid, rapid, reaching the limits of my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the, 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 way that, the way that the sound bounces around as it enters, it enters your ear helps you differentiate where it's coming, it's coming from. from. Uh -huh. And particularly when you, when you have both, you know, stereo, you know, stereo audio. Man, that's just so, so cool. Yes, yeah, so yeah, they put these microphone heads, heads in the middle of the room. room. And like, like if you recorded a band, and you know they're all in different positions, positions in the room. When you listen on headphones, <laughs> it'll sound like the band is all around you, and then it doesn't, it doesn't work, work with speakers, with speakers though. Right. That was so what they can, were saying. Yeah, you can you play, can play it with speakers, and it sounds, sounds fine. fine. It sounds, it sounds like, like stereo, stereo, but you, but you won't, won't get the positional effect. That's fascinating. I wonder yeah, how that's going to be used in a in the second Hellblade. Did you ever finish Hellblade, the first one? Uh, I think I, I'm pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I finished it. It was, it was, it was one, one of those games I put down for a long time, time and then I think I went back and back back finished it. it. Mm. Um, or maybe or I got so frustrated with, with, with the, like, the, the last, last fight, fight or something I did. <laughs> I <can't remember. laughs> That's I'm hilarious. Sure. Anyway. That game, that game for, for, being a, for being for a short game, game that took me way too long. Really? I wonder why. Uh... I don't, I don't know. I think, I think some, some of the puzzles, puzzles I, I, I get, some, some of those puzzles, puzzles I would get frustrated with, with and be like, like oh, I'm going to play something else. else. The puzzles, I remember. Yeah, that game was a little like, it was it was very linear. And uh, it was like, some of those puzzles, it's like the margin for error was, was so small. And so it's like, you have to find your way through the fire to this one specific area and you have to do it right. And if not, you're just gonna you gotta start the whole thing over again, right? right. Yeah, yeah. There was one puzzle that was like, like you go through this, this like, like um, this gateway woven out of branches, and when you go through the gateway, it it's like you're you're going into an alternate world where um, things have shifted. So as you go through the gate, it'll you know put a bridge someplace that allows you to get across somewhere. But the problem was it didn't happen every time you went through the gate. And I, for the life of me, I could not figure out, I'm like, like well, well, if I go through it this way, way or do I come at it from the other, other side, side, or, like, and I, eventually, eventually I just had to, like, like uh, kind of keep trying until some thing happened, thing happened that I needed to happen. That, that would have annoyed the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and all, all, all it needed was, was you, needed you needed some, some kind of an indicator, indicator that you've successfully done that thing, or you needed some signifier to tell you. Do this, do this thing, thing to make something, something happen. happen, but they're and riding this fine line, line right there. Right 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 just tell people what to what do, do, either. either. That's, that's no right, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of what it was. I definitely had a moment in that game where, like, the, the, the immersion broke because, like, I realized I was playing a game with some arbitrary rules, 
Yeah. And like I did, I no longer felt like I was the heroine. I I was just like, all right, well, shit. I wasn't supposed to turn left right there, or whoops. Like I guess I was supposed to go under that tree branch, and I died. Guess I got to start the section over. And there was also like kind of like the looming like, um, if you die too many times, you could lose your entire save game. Um, yeah, it, I don't like like. I, maybe, maybe that's true, true but, but I died, I died a, lot a lot in that game. And Apparently, it was fluff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, like every time you die, the, the stuff like creeps up her arm. arm. Uh huh. And my whole, whole arm, arm to my shoulder <laughs> is covered. <laughs> in, like, I, hope I hope you don't, you don't kill me anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine getting to the end and then dying that last time? No, no, no I, I would. I'd rage quite hard. hard. Man, that. Like, you can take this before you show it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, wonder, I wonder what it was. Like, I actually read an article about that. Like, that was, like, like the game almost lied to you. Like, it it kind of purposely lied to you to kind of keep pressure on you. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, the whole, that, that whole game. Yeah, yeah, the whole game is lying to you, but, you know. Because huh. you're, you're suffering the psychosis. psychosis. The, the, whole the whole thing, thing is real. real. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she's ready to talk shit about that shit too like but that shit's brilliant like more games need to just lie to you yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it was a really, really clever, clever game, game and graphically, graphically it looked, looked fantastic, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah there were just some weird gameplay game play it was enjoyable, it was enjoyable. Like, like i enjoyed the first like like two thirds of it the second mm-hmm. third of it, that, that last, last third, third i'm, 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 I'm ready. ready there wasn't enough there like it told a hell of a story so i never actually finished it um but i got i probably played it for maybe two or three hours um mm-hmm. and that was a, one of those games that i i fully intended to finish but it, it's hard it's hard to get back into because it doesn't have quite enough bite you know like yeah yeah um well, well you know i think, think part, part of, of it for me was like, like it had a really, really wild, wild story, story you know like you're 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 this this, uh, this, uh, this warrior, warrior with with psychosis, psychosis and you're living and you're, living, you're, you're seeing things, things and hearing things, things. things and then you're trying, trying to like to avenge your, your dead lover or husband, husband whatever, whatever, whatever uh being, being killed, killed by, by whomever <laughs> right <laughs> And, and and you like you go along this whole way, way and you're and then you start talking to him in your head. head and, 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 I don't know. Actually, the, whole the whole thing, thing kept, kept plodding along, along, and you kept getting like little snippets of of, of, of storyline story or, mm-hmm. or right. things that you think, think might be reality, reality creeping in here and there. there. But it, but it, it, it did ultimately go for, for a short game. It, it moved along slowly. Right. I feel like there were a lot of hurdles to get over to like advance and learn, learn more, more and know, know more. more yeah like I, i'm 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 learning that about myself so I've, I've always been like very much the kind of person where it i've always been like i you know a final fantasy 7 i respect it and i respect that you like it and i'll try it because the world has recommended it to me and then i try it and i fucking hate it like i play it for an hour and it's like you know I understand that this is only a PlayStation, but this game looks like fucking shit. And <laughs> I don't want to read through all of this. Like I I I need I need some kind of presentation. I need the package to be right. You know, like I I don't, you know, the the cool story is nice, but I don't I don't want to have to suspend disbelief in order to buy into this thing. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was kind of my problem. Like I guess I never even identified it as my problem with uh with Hellblade because I really I like the game for what like for what I played of it I really it it, it left a strong impact and yeah, I didn't yeah. like I didn't go I didn't not go back to it because I didn't dislike it but um it reminded me a lot of um have you heard of Spec Ops the line have you heard of that game no nope. it's this old military game from like the 360 era and mm-hmm. it was known because of its story and mm-hmm. uh and I I've been avoiding spoilers for years because i've been meaning to make my way back through this game but the gameplay is just fucking trash (laughs) it like it just represents like you know the the 360 era of games everybody thought that they could do hyper realistic military like oh yeah, yeah 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 and so they all tried it they all used unreal engine they all look the same like 
it was like, hoo go get the bad guys. Where's Xtan? Like, <laughs> it was all the same shit. And so, like, um, that game, when it first came out, it was controversial because, like, they, they tacked on a multiplayer thing that nobody wanted. Um, they were like, they should have just shipped it as a single player game. But, like, the single player game was kind of buoyed by its its story. And, you know, mm-hmm. everybody, you know, did. like, even still, like, all of my favorite list channels, yeah. they always talk about the story and the twist in it or whatever. But I reinstalled it the other day because um, I've been trying to go and play through my games. And, like, I played through, like, three missions. And I was like, this is fucking terrible. It's like, you know, do you... you loading screen you know you're in the desert you 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 walk a few feet you know something explodes their set piece enemies come out you take cover they're all trying to kill you it's like three of you and your men and it's like 20 of them and you mow through all of them and then you you move forward a little bit and then a helicopter crashes and then you get more conjecture and then like is it yeah it is it is so it's so it's so cookie cutter that i can't mm-hmm. Like I, the idea of playing this game for ten hours just to get to the twist that I've been avoiding on the internet, like <laughs> that sounds dreadful. Well, I went and played, played through, through uh, Half Life Two recently. You did? Well, yeah, because I I'd never done it. Right? Okay, so yeah. Half Life Two, because um, as you know, back in the day, I played through Half Life One, like as a kid, uh-huh. and then or, or a young adult, adult or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I've been talking about how old I am. Uh, <laughs> so, I won't say anything. I played through Half Life 2, and it was awesome because the gameplay you holds up so and the story is cool. cool. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But, but obviously, obviously, you're, you're, missing, you're, like, you're missing, missing some of the backstory. Story. I'm going to go back and I'm going to play, 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 play Half Life, the original. Mm-hmm. Couldn't, couldn't do it. Do it. That, that's hard, man. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was too. too it was like going, like going back, back just a little, little too far. Too far. Like the, the gameplay game wasn't, wasn't quite as, as it wasn't near as good, good as Half Life Two. two. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. It wasn't even close. Yeah, and then I, you I know, know, I was having some certain certain glitchy glitchy problems, problems with, with it running yeah. on my computer anyway. So I was like, you know what? No. Interesting. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Man, so I was gonna I really prepped for Alex, Alex whenever I get around to that. Ah, yeah. So have you tried Black Mesa yet? No. No. Okay, so um, one of the people that was responsible for or helped out with the creation of Half-Life, Alex, said that they were um, trying to prepare for Half-Life, Alex by playing through the old Half-Life games. And they started playing. Actually, it was someone that worked on the original Half-Life that also worked Mm -hmm. on Alex. And um, they went back and tried to play the original Half-Life and gave up. And they're like, fuck this. I'm playing Black Black Mesa. (laughs) but um, but I've been doing some. Uh, I did a little bit of research on uh, Half Life One, and uh, I didn't realize Half Life One is actually kind of controversial when it uh, like it was like the first remaster. I don't know if you know that. Like, oh, really? no. yeah, Half Life One Source. Have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah I think you were talking about, about that. that. Um, yeah. It's a long term project, project to like redo, redo the thing, right? Oh no! So Half Life Source actually came out around the time Half-Life 2 came out and all it was was they took Half-Life 2's game and they ported it or Half-Life 1's game and they ported it into the source engine. And so <laughs> um you got you had all the original Half-Life 1 or most of the original Half-Life 1 assets but uh yeah, yeah. they now got the new like water physics, they got new like body physics, um there was new lighting, but it was just literally like Asset for asset, they just dumped it in the game. Um, and I, uh, when I was doing some research on it, I, I found that when they did that, they actually broke a lot of core elements of the game because of the way the source engine actually processed. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I was uh, I was curious as to how you played it because like some people would say, you know, you could play the original or you can play through Source or you could play through Black Mesa. All three of those games provide different core experiences for some reason. Um, that's but, interesting uh, yeah but uh half-life 2 is fucking cool what did you yeah, think yeah, of it i i enjoyed, I enjoyed the hell out of that game because i thought like the guns, guns all the weapons, weapons felt, felt like they had the weight, weight to them, them. like right. you know when you because the, the 
the sound, sound matched, matched the weaponry, weaponry and, and the root ball. Like everything seems to, to line up to give you like, like that feel. feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the gameplay the game was, you know, too fast enough to feel modern. modern. Mm-hmm. Um, and then vehicles. The vehicles are fun on that game. Yeah, man. The, there's like the like fan boat we can go around. around that. That. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and it's got it's multiple, like, you know, levels to, you know, in terms of um, there's an altitude, too, right? You're up ladders, you some dude on platform shooting at you or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, and kind of stealth it a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I, yeah, I enjoyed that, that, that game. I'm glad, man. I, it's cool that that game still holds up. Like, I know some people don't really, like... People try to say that the combat to Half Life Two doesn't really hold up, but I fucking love the way the combat feels on that engine. Like, yeah, yeah. I I thought it was great. Even when you get into those big fights, fights, you know, it's you can. I mean, you I mean, can, can kind of like, like bulldoze your way, your way through, through it pretty through. easily, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, it's it's enjoyable the whole the whole way through. You know, um, one of the things that I like most about that game, I feel like that game was ahead of its time in a lot of ways because of its interface. Um, the user interface to that game is just fucking, it's so clean. And like, you know, I don't know if you noticed this, Half-Life Alex, like they use a lot of the same, like, actually Half-Life has been kind of using the same style interface probably since the first one. Because I noticed, I noticed that the, the, the interface to me seemed very, very like, like very old school. school. Uh-huh. Like, it was super, super simple. Simple. I think if I remember, I remember correctly, correctly, you had when, when the game came up, up it had, had some, some you know some, some image and some, some like hero image behind, behind or, or you know maybe moving, moving you know I don't know but um, and then it was, it was just, just like, like a transparency it's with the menu on. on. It's beautiful, man. Simple. Yeah, it's simple. It's like you can easily find what you need. You, you, you know, know what gets, gets me about um, some, some games, games I've played recently, recently is you get yeah, two different, different menus, menus based, based on, on which controller button you press. press. So, like, so you, like get, you get like, like, a, like a, there's like, there's like an in game menu, and then there's, there's like, like the, the main, main menu. menu. And so, like, so like, the select, select button, button will give you, or start oh, button will give you like your in game stuff, and then the start start be like, like main main. What the hell was that playing when you did that? Shit, just name one. I'm sure you million yeah, different games. I did like that. Probably. Yeah, something was I playing before. before yeah, anyway, anyway you know, like, it'll come to me maybe at some point. That's pretty but, common. Um, like, cause it'll be like, uh, the select button will bring up like your map and like you know your. Your quests and like your skill trees. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Then I'm like, oh, I want to change the settings, the settings. And, then, and I, have to, I go to this other thing. thing. You know, the, I have to hit the other button to go to this other, other menu structure. structure. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, know. It just seemed seen odd, odd to me at the time, and, and, and I could and always, always, I'd always screw up. Maybe it was because I was playing multiple games that have this like, like that dual setup, and so one game does a little differently. Listen. Don't play Doom Eternal. Why? Don't, don't, don't kill him, man. <laughs> man. I have I haven't had a game piss me off just because of its interface. I haven't had that happen to me since the Division Two is the only game that really did that to me in recent memory, and I can't think of too many other games. Like the only other one that I can think of off the top of my head is like. Monster Hunter, or it's like this game is going out of its way to get in my way, and I don't want to play you anymore. <laughs> really? really? So, so it's that, that much different, different than the first, than the first one. one. Mm-hmm. I am. I. I've been having a hard time, man. <laughs> like, really? yeah, it's. So the thing with that, with the is interface, the or the HUD or what? what? Yeah, it's like it's the HUD. It's the main menu HUD. It's the options menu HUD. It's the in-game HUD. It's the oh, tutorials that pop up during the game. Um, I had like I had a whole boss battle ruined for me from a tutorial. A whole boss battle, like 
man. Like, were the in the boss battle? Yeah, like they. So okay, so all right. So this one battle, I'm going to tell you about this one battle that, like, when it like, I had this moment. Like I, I, I played the game and I had this sh- this shock value that happened to me with the interface, and I spent two hours complaining about it, and and then I stopped playing, came back to it. And I was like, okay, you know what? I think I can live with this. Um, the game just was, it wasn't going out of my way to get in my way. And then I get to this boss battle and it's like, the game is like going out of its way to set you up for this fight, right? <laughs> and um, it's like, you, you, you'll, you'll, fight, you'll, you'll go into a new area of a stage and you'll see some dude getting transported to a part of the stage you can't access yet. And then you'll kill a bunch of people. And you'll go forward and you see another part of this body going through this whole process. And the, the narrator's talking to you like, we got something for your ass. Just wait. And so there's all this anticipation. And then you finally get to the guy. They give you this epic cutscene, And then they, they give you control of your character. Or they drop the camera back into your character. But before his gun even comes up all the way on the screen, you get a big ass pop up on the screen that shows like an animation of doom guy fucking slaughtering this boss and it gives you like four like things on how to beat him they literally give you a boss battle spoiler spoiler it's like i didn't pay for no damn strategy guide like y'all just gave the game away i was i couldn't believe it like i was and it, it's all it's all on stream like i'm gonna make a review about it and i, I it's, i'm i'm gonna talk my shit um like it it literally was like it was like it was like the old house of the dead games remember the old house of the dead games there's like big epic boss and it's like shoot this guy right in his head that's his weak spot like (laughs) that's what the game did it's like this pop-up this little menu imagine take imagine um just a fucking pop-up modal and within this pop-up modal it's like a bulleted list of things you have to do like kill this in this weak spot first then when that one's done you want to kill this weak spot and then when that one's done you want to kill this weak spot like that's literally what it did before and i have to press a to to kill it like to 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 end the modal. Like I was just like, y'all literally just spoiled the whole fucking boss battle. Like you just mm-hmm. gave the game away. Um, but that's not even. Oh, sorry. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was, I was, I was, I was gonna, gonna say, say say that you know I, I prefer really, really, you know like, like for a boss, boss battle, battle like if they have like, some kind some of system, system in the game, game right, 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 like glowing, glowing blue. blue. Stuff, stuff is, is the weak, weak spot, right? right? And so, and so that gives you the opportunity, the opportunity to, to say, like, all right, all right, well, well, I can, I can see, see that this guy's got, got you know, know, blue tubing on the front of him and on the back of him. And so, so I got to do something. Do something that's, I gotta, that's where I need right. to shoot, right? And it tells me what I need to do without stopping me and telling me what I need to do. So in other words, you don't need no damn tutorial. Well, right, right. If the character design is incorporate, you know, part, part of the character, character design, design is, is an identification system, system, you know, an identification system, system for weak spots. spots. Yeah, yeah, I don't need a tutorial for that. Well, would you believe that, uh, so that boss fight was like four hours into the game. <laughs> Still giving me tutorials. And uh, they so had a... The setting? What's that? Oh, maybe. Oh man, there are so many HUD options, like, and they're all on. It's like twenty options, and they're all on. Um, <laughs> and would you believe that it does all? Like, it has all these HUD options, and the game still doesn't do a good enough job with visual and audible feedback as far as what's happening on the screen. Like, it's just noise. It's just it's just a bunch of noise. Oh um, yeah, that's I been my experience. Had a little bit of that problem. What did? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, just just, just, just in this, like, like just, just in the sense, sense of like, like auditory time time slot, you know, they're just like slot. always, yeah, yeah, particularly, particularly if, you're in, you're in, if you're in like, like an arena, you know, yeah, 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 and there's, and there's you, know, you know monsters, monsters everywhere, everywhere. you're like, you know, yeah, all you, you hear, you know, them making all their monstery noises, all mm-hmm. all directions, like that's not helpful, and then you know, shit's blowing up, and you're firing rockets, and like, like, it's it's you know, it can just be a little a bit much, right? I don't yeah. think it's the same in what, what, the new one. Well, so it's it's For difficult. <laughs> so the it's it's hard to imagine this criticism having played Doom 2016 
and not having played Doom Eternal because they got so much right in Doom 2016 that you didn't even realize they got right because it was just right. It's like the PowerPoint effect, right? It's like, you know, there are just some ways PowerPoint and Word just fucking work. And you don't, they work so well that you can use any word processor, or any PowerPoint software or presentation software. And there will be things that just click because, you know, they just, they just do. Um, 20, Doom 2016 was that way. It's like, okay, I know how to start a new game. I know how to get to the fucking options menu. I know how to change my settings. Um, I know how to customize my character in the multiplayer because the game does a good enough job leading me in that direction. Doom 20 or Doom Eternal's problems start before you even get into the fucking game. They start right at the main menu. Um, there is like for one, so the the colors that they use in the interface. I'm just gonna fucking run through these things real quick. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the colors that they use in the interface um, don't seem to make a lot of sense. Like, so I like that the game feels old school like when i when it's hitting all the right notes it feels a lot like quake 2 did like um Mm -hmm. if i were to pull myself out of the past like when quake 2 was fresh um Mm -hmm. and you know set me down in front of doom eternal i would be like wow like this is that next step in video game like i see where shooters are going or whatever like it would make sense but um but that's kind of ignoring all of the usability games video games have made since then and it's like, you know, certain things like, hey, maybe we shouldn't use this font because it's kind of hard to read. Or, hey, maybe we shouldn't use this color, these two colors together. Or maybe we shouldn't throw all of these options on this one screen because, you know, like just just small things. It's like they, they there's this kind of like everything in the kitchen sink approach that they've taken with the game. And um, mm. like I saw a, re- a re- like a review of Forbes, like Forbes reviewed the game. And they said that the guys, it feels like Doom Eternal kind of doesn't realize what made Doom twenty sixteen great. Um, mm-hmm. And I found that comment blasphemous. I played the game and it was like, you know, <laughs> so it's like you have your main menu and it's like there's one option called customize, um, mm-hmm. but that option is not your options menu. Um, you click customize. It allows you to customize your home screen. Like, okay. Um, wow. But, uh, unnecessary. Unnecessary. right? Because when I go into play a game, the thing I want to see the least is the freaking home screen. Why do I want to customize it? I don't want to customize anything. And the only way to do it is to play this multiplayer mode, like this. It has a it has an asymmetrical multiplayer mode, which I'm sure is great, but like nobody even wanted the original multiplayer from Doom. Like mm. and that was much closer to a, a an id shooter experience than an asymmetrical shooter ever would be. Um but like, you know, and they there's like, you know, there are perks like you know, in these customizations, you don't even see these customizations unless you're either on the main menu or you're in like the battle mode. Um, so like you can't even deck your doom guy out for the single player experience. So, um, you know, all these customizations just don't mean much. And it'll be like, I'll, I started the game up this other, the other day. And like, there was a prompt telling me I could unlock mullet doom guy. And it's like doom guy with a mullet and his like stomach is sticking out of his, you know, of his suit, which is cool. But it's like, when the fuck am I ever going to use this? And uh oh I haven't even gotten to the oh so the customization thing so the, the the customization thing that's that's one whole problem in itself right um I still haven't found the option screen and so um I'm staring at the main menu menu and um I click customize two or three times because it's like this has to be it right because I want to customize my experience but no there is an uh, there's a button on like the bottom left part of the screen that has two cogs on it and uh and it's marked by a K if you're playing on mouse and keyboard. So if you don't see this, they're expecting you to know that you press K to open up the fucking options menu. Oh, really? K! <laughs> it yeah. sounds sure, crazy. Okay. K! 
Yeah, okay. Really? What's that? Really? It's always okay. So just right. Yeah. So like, what? It's been like that all fucking all decade. Duh. Um. Oh yeah, I was I was so irritated about. It. So I finally get there. Oh, and then the, the interface is puke green. So it's like it's white text on top of puke green. <laughs> and uh, what else? The fucking what's that? So you're saying you would have done it better than that? <laughs> yes, I would have done it differently. Yes, um, the fucking settings don't make sense. The graphic settings don't make sense. Like the 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 highest settings, ultra nightmare. But it's like you know, I don't know what ultra nightmare motion blur means, or like you know, what if there's only three settings, and you know, there's just you know, small things like that. And then uh, they have the you know the colorblind settings that you can tweak on the hood. Um, I actually had to go and use the colorblind settings to make the HUD more legible. Oh my god. Yeah. Wait, so does this, that, what, the, the big question is, does the gameplay make up for it? That, well, so that's subjective. So, well, well, I'm asking, but I'm asking you. Yeah. So in, your, in your opinion. In my opinion, when the HUD is out of the way, the game sings. My biggest problem with Doom is that it gets in its own way. It just it there's there's always something. It's like Yeah, man, like it'll just be like it's it's so delightful in some ways. Like it's such a big step forward for shooters in some ways. It's like um the combat trusts that you can handle whatever they throw at you. Right. And so like I feel like I I can see the vision of you know the level designers. I can see the vision of you know the gameplay artists or like the people that are you know, th that were actually tweaking the moment to moment gameplay. Like um, you know like there will be parts where it's like you'll see you know like levels will be made out of big ass demons that fought and died ages ago, and you're crawling on this motherfucker's sword and you have to press a button on his sword to tear through the next part of the level like. When you see that shit, it's like, oh my god, I can't believe this is real. Yeah, yeah. And it runs like a charm. Like, it runs better than Doom 2016 did. Wow. I don't know how they did it. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I've been looking forward to it for months now. And it's funny, you know, because I've just finished Red Dead. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm about ready for the next thing. It's worth it. It is worth it. All right. I mean, that's that's it. That's the, the bottom line. Is it's still it's worth, worth it, even if it can't get out of its own way. Yeah. So, and and this is why I say it's subjective because like it depends on the kind of person you are. Like, um, the the game. Like you and I have had discussions in the past where you know you'll go through a whole game having never leveled up your character. Um, <laughs> yeah. It. Actually, since that conversation, I think I've changed my habits. Slightly. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> but I wouldn't blame you with Doom twenty or with Doom because, like, it's all, it's exhausting to look through these screens. Like, um, there is one we had that conversation about mm -hmm. Doom twenty sixteen. You what? So we did that. That was that was yeah. It was the it was the last Doom that, that we had that conversation about because. Because I never, uh, I never spent any time modding the guns. Uh huh. Yep. Which contributed to me having a little bit of a harder time later on in the game. And then I went back and modded the guns. It's like, oh, it's much better now. <laughs> but yeah, it was, you know, I'm old, you know, old school with the shooters. Was, you know, uh -huh. Run a gun and pick up some guns and ammo and let's keep plowing through. Yeah, man. Doom Eternal, you, you need to upgrade. Like, yeah, 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 I mean, I mean it's, it's kind of the modern, modern thing. Like, every, you know, it, there's, there's a subset, subset of players, players that love that aspect of the game, of, of, of game, game, those types of games, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to, you know, it's like if you're going to make a shooter, you're going to have to, you can't just have like, that's that gun and that's that gun. And you need right. to spice, spice it up because that's what people expect. And I'm cool with that, but, you know, it just, ha like, I, I'm so cool with that. Because Doom 2016, it just, uh, it was cool. You know, there there's so much swagger. And Doom, Doom Eternal is the same way. Like, there's a lot of swagger in the game. Like, you know, the weapons are amazing. 
and it encourages you to use the weapons because they don't just dump ammo on you like the old game does. Like, you know, it's like you have to, you know, I think at where my ammo is for my shotgun right now, I maybe can hold maybe 15 or 20 shells. Um, and I run out, I run out quick, but like, but the problems come up with that game where like it, it has a problem with feedback, at least for me. Um, mm-hmm. With Doom 2016, I, I it makes me want to go back and play it and figure out where like what it was about that game that you know like I didn't have these problems in Doom 2016, um, but like with Doom, I had I had this this issue in Doom Eternal where like um, I. You know, I had the three guns I was cycling through and, you know, my shotgun ran out. And so I'm like clicking my shotgun because I didn't realize that I was out of ammo. And so um, the game auto switches me to like my plasma rifle. And so like, OK, using my plasma rifle and uh, and then it auto. No, I was using my plasma rifle. Then it auto switched me to my shotgun. And like what will happen is like, you know, you, you if you switch to a gun, like if, like you can like kind of cycle through your guns or you can choose which gun you want. Right, right. But if you cycle through your guns, it's just going to choose the previous gun you had selected. Um, so you can only have two weapons equipped at a time. So, you know, maybe you'll have your plasma rifle out and your shotgun out. Yeah. Um, but, like, if one of your guns runs out of ammo, it's going to fuck that cycle up. Oh. And so I had a moment where it's like I was switching between my plasma rifle and my super shotgun. And um, my my super shotgun had run out of ammo and I didn't realize it. And so I go all the way up to this enemy, and I'm like five or seven minutes into this boss fight. Um, and I'm like, whooping ass. Except I didn't realize that I was out of shotgun ammo, and I look at a wall and blow myself up with a rocket launcher. Like, <laughs> it was over in a flash. And my stream was like, what the fuck is this? What is this? <laughs> And I'm just like, man. And all I can think about is like, okay, like, well, where were the fucking health indicators? Okay, where was my ammo indicator? Okay, like, how come I can't tell where I'm getting shot from? And it's like, you know, when you're when you're hurt, like, you have 20% health left, and your whole fucking screen just gro- glows bright red. And so, like, the mm-hmm. edges of the screen, like right, the right. that information yeah. is effectively nullified. On top of the fact that I'm almost damaged now, like the game's literally handicapping my vision. Uh, <laughs> So small stuff like that, it's like, um, and this was the same boss battle where it, it, it pretty much gave the game away. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, it, uh, I, I earned you good. Right. It's just like, there, it, it is, it is like, I, I can't figure out my problem with it. Like, I, I just, I know there's somewhere this game is bothering me on a very, very, very core level. Like when, you know, I like I still, you know, will be dumped on an upgrade screen and I'm still frustrated. Like had five or six hours in, I'm like, okay, fuck, I have to use these things now. Like, I have to figure out what these damn icons mean because there's no context. And the game doesn't explain it unless I'm actually on the screen. And then, you know, and then there'll be this weird glowing thing that shows up that'll that's supposed to let me know, hey, you can now use these things. <laughs> And then, like, even the colors that they use is strange sometimes. Like, it'll just go into, like, a, you know, at some point, like, I went to one screen and there was the interface was using bright blue everywhere. And I was like, what the fuck is this color? Hmm. So, it's very strange, man. Like, I just, I just want, I just want to dream about Doom and not have nightmares about it. Right. right. Well, well, it's, it's, it's opposite, opposite of what we were talking we were, about earlier with the, uh, you know, you know load to no UI games, right? right. <laughs> Just load it all in. Uh, I noticed when I was playing Red Dead that the the, the HUD, HUD just disappears all the time, mm. and it's great, great because when, when it's one of the one of the most amazing things, things about that game, game visuals. You know, just, just that, that whole environment and the way that they cast light and, and the way that they use fog. fog. Incredible! Right. The whole thing is just stunning to look at. And so, so you don't want a stupid mini map up there all the time and your health meters and your horse's health meters. And, you know, right. But when I first get on the horse, it shows the horse's health and stuff. I'm like, okay, the horse is doing all right. Let's carry on. Uh huh. Bust out your gun. Now, now you're, you know, so your health stuff comes out. 
So, so it's, it's contextually, contextually providing, providing you the HUD when you, when you need it, need it. Mm -hmm. and letting you enjoy the countryside, countryside when, when you don't need it. And I'm like, that's so, so great. great. It was so annoying, annoying a few times, times when I'm like, wait, wait, wait how's my health right now? And I got to do something to make the HUD show up. But by and large, you just appreciate it being out of the way, you know? You know, like that was a whole like initiative in video games was like uh, Dead Space was one of the first games that was noted for its lack of interface. Like, well, not even its lack of interface, but its ability to flow the interface into your gameplay experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that one was really cool. I, that's one of those games I put down because I just got the hard part and moved on to other things. But, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, that's what I want to go back to. But yeah, that was cool because it was third person and so you could see the... His like, like health, health indicator in. on his backpack, right? Mm -hmm. And then the uh, was it's it, that one too. Where he has like a hologram, hologram comes, comes up off his wrist, wrist or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, for, the menus. for the what? For the menu. I think it was the menus, right? Like your your brawl in his uh, in his wrist, wrist mounted, mounted hologram, hologram thing. thing. Yep, and you couldn't pause the game when you're. You know that's interesting because like um, you were talking earlier about how you press select and it'll bring up a menu that doesn't. You know, it's it's not a pause menu, but it's um it's a, just a fucking right. menu. Um, the way Dead Space kind of solved that was that it brought that menu up into the game, and you could actually like rotate the camera around the hologram and see the oh, be yeah. like behind the hologram. Yeah. yeah. So, and that game also did another cool thing that I like, where like it doesn't tell you the way forward, but there's a button that you like a locator button, and uh, it will like. It'll light up a path that leads to your objective. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I remember, I remember that. that. Uh, yeah, yeah it's a cool game. game. I'm gonna go back to that one. It was ahead of its time. I think was, was it three I was playing? I think so. One of the newer ones. ones. Three was so good. It wasn't scary at all. It wasn't <laughs> actually three was cool. Like you, and I could actually play through three because uh, that game was like you know, well, that was when EA was in the process of murdering it. But um, the, if you did the co-op multiplayer, uh, each player actually had a different experience. So like, your character would see hallucinations that I wouldn't, and so like, you would be like, "Bro, what the fuck is that?" And you'll start tripping balls, and I'll be like, "What are you? Why are you? What's? What are you freaking out about?" And your character will be like, just staring at this metal texture on the wall, like, "You don't see this thing right here?" And I'm like, "No, there's literally nothing there." That's actually incredible. Um, I mean, you know, we were talking about playing as a character with psychosis in, in Hellblade, and then you, you, that kind of takes this idea of, you know, what's reality inside your video game, uh, and then twists it up by adding, you know, someone else's perspective. So, like, you know, if you're in Hellblade. You're seeing, seeing stuff, stuff, and you're like, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure she's, she's not, not actually seeing that. It's a giant, it's a giant horn, horn monster or something. Or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but it, it doesn't, doesn't matter work. because that's, that's the, the, that's the game you're playing. That's the world you're in. That's, the, that's what she's experiencing. Mm -hmm. right? right. You're experiencing it through her. Um, but then, then you can, you, if you, you do, do the same, same thing, but then you have like your buddy next to you. And he's like, what horn monster? Then all of a sudden, you begin to question your reality even more. Uh huh. It's it's brilliant, man. We should totally play it. I think that um, like I, that game had who? Hmm. Okay, if you're actually gonna play it, you should play through Dead Space one and two first. Oh, all this time you think I have. Oh, you're okay. All right. Well, just look at the cliff notes. Pulling it up to see if I have it in my Steam library. So uh, even if you don't finish them, like, so I'm trying to get to this point where, like, I just want to experience games. Like, maybe if I don't, if I don't finish them, I want to at least play through them a little bit, get a, get an opinion on it. Um, but with Death Space One, Two, and Three, you don't, you don't have to play through all those games. But those games were memorable. They were all memorable for totally different things. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, like you know, Dead Space One, it uh, it started. You know the whole Dead Space craze. You know there was the silent protagonist. There was the new UI. Um, Dead Space Two. They kind of took it up to eleven. Um, they gave Isaac Clark a whole bunch of personality. They gave him a voice. He's a well, very well realized character. It was fucking terrifying. Um, <laughs> but they were actually kind of switching towards you know big bombastic action and stuff. Um, 
But then Dead Space 3, I think Dead Space 2, I personally like Dead Space 2 more um, because I played them on PC and Dead Space 2 had like as a as a PC port, it just shit on the first one. Um, oh, and Dead Space 2 um, didn't have loading screens in the games. Um, they they were one of the first games to have like um, like once you're loaded into the game, like all loading screens are actually hidden within the game. So right, right. right. That's that actually something that bugged me out about going to play Half Life Two. Was loading screens? Like, whoa, whoa, I haven't, I haven't seen, seen one of these forever. <laughs> and they're jarring too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a total shift in in your uh, whole experience. What's, what's happening? happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dead Space Two. Dead Space Two is one of the first games to like on a on a mainstream level to like to to do away with that. Um, mm-hmm. Dead Space Three got a lot of shit when it came out because um, they were moving so far away from horror, and um, uh-huh. and so what it, it's it really yeah, wasn't yeah. that scary. Like sci-fi, just a just a straight, straight sci-fi, sci-fi type game. game. Mm-hmm. And it was good. It was an amazing game, and like if it. If it wasn't a Dead Space game, people would remember it for being scarier. Mm-hmm. Um, right, 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 right. But it just didn't hold up. So, so you know how I, I like the... Uh, the well, I, I, I should say, maybe you don't know. I've been enjoying the slower slower games, games recently. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, yeah like Red, Red Dead was great, great because at first... Uh, I was like, like mm, this, man, this is slow, slow right? right? Every, you know. But, but they really, they really the story, story develops, develops and, and the story becomes really interesting. interesting and you're like, like all right, you know, the characters are interesting. It's like, so okay, you, you go along with them, you're like, fine, I'm on a horse. horse. I'm going to ride across the map. Cool. cool. You see, you see all the stuff, stuff, you can stop, do stuff, you can kill and skin an animal, whatever, talk to the homeless guy, do money. Cool. I actually Jeez. stopped. Oh, I stopped at this blind, blind guy. guy. I had to ask for money on the side of the side of the dusty road. road. Uh, and you know, <laughs> being a rock star game, like, well, there's well, no point in that. <laughs> of course, and of he, course. And he goes, goes, "Oh, oh, what are you doing? What are you?" Doing? And I'm like, "Wait a minute, how's he seeing me?" And and he's, he's like, like, "Okay, oh, you got me. You got me. I'm not quite blind." blind. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's actually fucking hilarious. Yeah, they hide, they hide all sorts of stuff in those games, man. It's, I, I really enjoyed that, that game a lot. Um, <laughs> combat satisfying. satisfying. Yeah, but anyway, it, it's a slower paced game, game, right? All well, these missions just move along, and yeah, a lot of people on horses, horses talking. Talk but then but I, got, I also uh, got really, really excited, excited seeing all the blues of Snowrunner. What is that? Which, Which is, is a, a um, like, like a, a wilderness, wilderness trucking, trucking simulator. Oh yeah, you were talking about that. Yep. yep. So, so it's, it's really wild. wild. And, and so, so the the, the physics, physics modeling is fantastic. So, so you, you have, have to take it, you know, big, big, you know, big, big uh, like, like imagine a dump truck towing a trailer, trailer full of wood. You gotta, you gotta drive, drive that thing, thing through, through the wilderness, and it's like, like muddy trails, trails or snow covered trails, trails or, or whatever. And, and uh, you know, you, you have missions, you, you gotta take stuff from point A to point B. B. And you have a scout vehicle, vehicle. It's, it's like, like a pickup truck, truck, and you can go. Mm-hmm. And you can you upgrade, of course, you can upgrade, upgrade the vehicles, vehicles and everything. everything. Of course. But it's but just a slow game. It's just a slow game. There's no races. You know, these are off, you know, giant work trucks that are. Going, going off road, road nothing's fast. fast. Uh, you just are slogging through stuff. stuff. You can't make a drum blood blood blood. You gotta use your winch to drag yourself off to one side, see the attraction. And it's, it's really, really cool. cool. It's, it's like, like mesmerizing. mesmerizing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Graphics, Graphics are decent. decent. Physics are fantastic. Okay. And you can you can do third like third person outside the vehicle or you can do inside the vehicle. What is it called? Snow What is the so what's the point of this game? That's, That's pretty, pretty much, much it. <laughs> you get <laughs> permissions to do, and you can, like, like you know, you can upgrade, upgrade the trucks. trucks. But it's but it's, it's essentially just a big open world, world with off road these, these off road work vehicles. Cool. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. wild. Man, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> kind of boring, blow it away. Man, that reminds me of um, Animal Crossing. Have you heard of that game? Yeah, yeah I've heard, heard a lot about it, but I actually know like, like absolutely, absolutely nothing about it. Me too. <laughs> I don't fucking 
fucking get it. Like, I, like, literally, it is like, I, I think of, like, all the millions of gameplay clips I feel like I saw, and it's like, some dude picking up turnips in a living room, or, <laughs> like, they, you know, they, they're trying to catch bugs, then they get chased by a spider, and... and I don't. I just don't understand. But people, people fucking love it. It's 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 just like kind of one. It's like a community building game where it's like you know, it's almost like Zen. You know, you 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 go in and you you work on your garden and then you you know you go see how your neighbors are doing and then like the game just kind of gives you things to do and I mean I don't. I clearly have no idea what the game is about. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's, you know, it's, in some ways, it's like, like um, Minecraft. Minecraft. Um, there's no right. way where, where, where you just put build stuff, stuff and, and mine stuff. And, and, stuff. And, and, my brother, my, my brother's into it right now. He's, he's got two kids, kids, and they, you know, you get them involved. And, and, and his brother-in-law <clears> gets super into it and play a lot. And so my brother put up his own Minecraft server so that he can, you know, control the world or whatever. And even he even got my dad into it. My dad just turned. Sixty-four. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Playing Play Minecraft, Minecraft, building. I went over there. I went over to my parents' house the other day. They're, they're, my dad is showing me his. It's like Minecraft house. The fuck? <laughs> That's. It's cool. You know, he's, he's doing it to to be involved with his grandson. You know, playing the game and everything. Yeah, be involved with his grandson. He's showing his <laughs> Minecraft house off. <laughs> Man is having a blast. And then he takes me to Uncle Dan's house, house and then over to my, my brother's place. place. <laughs> yeah, it's That's pretty funny. funny. That's fucking interesting, man. <laughs> Does he have an RTX card? Uh, uh, who? My your dad. dad. Yeah. No, no, he's got uh, just regular board graphics. graphics. Okay. I was going to say, there's two types of Minecraft players. There's the, <laughs> the onboard graphics type, and there's the 12-year-old with the RTX 2080, and he only plays Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, no, he's, no, got, he's got, got a pretty, pretty he's got a well, well put together, together basic setup. Set no, That's what's up. Graphics card at the moment. He didn't really have a need for it. Yeah, yeah. That's Since you can put my crap on like a graphing calculator. Anything, yeah, man. That game is. It's kind of insane how like, what kind of world do we live in? Where it's not a bad thing, but it's just fascinating that. Minecraft is now like the computer melter. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I don't, you know, it's, it's funny, funny about that game. It even has like a Windows 95 esque menu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Hi. The Minesweeper menu? Oh, it's funny. You can do better. You can do a little. I, and I, I know it's a thing. Like, like Minecraft, Minecraft is its own thing. thing. I get it. But. I get, I get it, but I don't get it, you know what I mean? Right. Did you know that they have a uh, a dungeon crawler that they just released? No. Wait, Wait maybe. What's, what's it called? called? Minecraft Dungeons. Oh. Real clever, oh. right? You got, the, you got the whole marketing team on that one. Right. Yeah. Man, that just fucking brilliant, right? Like, can you imagine, like, Microsoft was just given this fucking gold mine of an IP? Like, right. Notch isn't even involved in that shit anymore. You know, no, just sitting there counting count his money. money. Counting his money. I hope he stays like that. But <laughs> shout out to Notch. Shout out to Notch. Um, <laughs> there is another thing. I, this is kind of digressing a little bit. Um, I wanted to mention um, there's another game I've been playing recently. Uh, that uh, so you know it's an important time to be a, a, a gamer right now, especially like a millennial or like you know what 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 comes after or before millennial Gen Gen, Gen Z Gen X Gen Z. Oh, oh, you oh, mean you, yeah? What came? What comes after is it's Gen, Gen Y. Oh, uh, Gen Z. I, I, I can't keep track of it all. Yeah, Everybody's always complaining about, about some other generation. generation. Right? Yeah, that's just some millennial, millennial oh, shit. That's 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, you know, I I'm. I've I've debated on how how millennial I am. I, I'm mad millennial. Who the fuck am I kidding? <laughs> um, but uh, but no, I wanted to mention that uh, so 
like people our age, right? Um, were you know aware and active in like you know the '90s around this time where like these very very important video games hit the market, and um, and now we're at this time in the future where like these games are kind of being revived, mm. um, and like. Like nostalgia doesn't have to carry these games anymore because they've been brought into the modern age and been treated with the care that they deserve. Um, like there's Final Fantasy VII, um, mm-hmm. which you know there's the original Final Fantasy VII, which was like the JRPG of JRPGs, um, and then there's the remake that just came out, which you know is also a very much it is very much a, a JRPG, but you can play it like a, a modern action adventure game. Um, mm-hmm. And is just you know accessible on all these different levels, and it is uh, culturally just as important as it was then, if not more so, because they hit all the marks. Um, same with Doom twenty sixteen. It's like you know, Doom is was this classic franchise, and it was so classic and revered that no one had faith that they could bring it back and do it justice. But then they did, and um, and then Doom Eternal comes around, and from a gameplay perspective, it's even better. Um, you got Half Life Alex, um, where you know. Half Life Three has dogged people for years. Like it is like Half Life Three was supposed to be the next Duke Nukem Forever, um, and uh, not only does the game come out, but it exceeds expectations. Um, you have Streets of Rage Four. Um, have you heard of Streets of Rage? No, no it's, it's funny. funny. I just saw it on your stream the other day. Mm. Stream that game. So part of the reason why I'm having a hard time with Doom Eternal is because there I don't I don't I don't weigh a lot of games against nostalgia, but the Doom franchise absolutely has to compete with itself. Like sure, yeah, it just yeah, like I, I have very fond memories going all the way back. And so, you know, and then Doom twenty sixteen is one of my favorite games. So it there's it's two layered nostalgia with that. Um, with uh, there were Streets of Rage, and then there's also Borderlands Three. Um, so I, I, I've been playing through those games recently: Doom Eternal, Streets of Rage Four, Borderlands Three, um, and all of those franchises, franchi- franchises that are that hold very dear to my heart. Um, I, uh, I I held back on buying Borderlands Three for a long time because I played through so much Borderlands Two that I just couldn't fathom how Borderlands Three could be any more fun. Like, yeah. I felt like I did it to death and like I would you know you I was watching through the press stuff and like their trailers and shit it's like it looks fun but I'm just burned out um I finally got the chance to play through Borderlands 2 or Borderlands 3 like I'm playing through it now but like that game made me feel the way Borderlands 2 made me feel when it first came out and I was playing it in college with all my roommates um it was just like there's just like these magical moments that come in Borderlands where it's like I forget that I'm actual an actual person in physical space. Nothing exists but the game and the audio, the combat. Nothing else exists. Like Borderlands Two made me feel that, and then Borderlands Three recently made me feel that. It's almost like I went back in time. Um, and like, and it was like it was like the way I like Borderlands Three felt the way I thought I remembered Borderlands Two. Um. And so, like, and I, and I felt bad. Like, I bought that game for twenty bucks, and I felt bad. Like, I should have bought, I should pay sixty for it. Um, I got that same kind of nostalgia from Streets of Rage. Um, so, like, Streets of Rage, the old Streets of Rage games, actually, those are from Sega Genesis. So, those, those games are even older. And um, and so, they had even more nostalgia that they had to live up to. And no one ever expected this game to live up to the hype, but it did. It like, and it's still a two D brawler. Like, so yeah, I saw that. I was like, I was, I was kind of intrigued by, uh, it, you know, I, I there, also, also like, like platformers, platformers and 2D brawlers, and 2D brawlers like, like those types of things. things. I mean, I, I haven't, haven't played, played one of those in, I can tell you how long, you know, you know except maybe playing like, like little, little double, double dragon, dragon on the uh, that little mini NES yes. thing, uh huh. <laughs> and you, you just don't think that there's how much more it could it be to that, right. Right, 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 right. Play Streets of Rage. 
<laughs> that game is deep. It's so crazy because like it does a lot. It it, it it brings in all this stuff that made the old game successful. So like all the gameplay mechanics, like the way the combos work, the way like you know you get, your character will psh, 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 it'll knock a character away. Like if you walk yeah. all the way up to a character, it'll automatically grab them. You can jump over them. All that stuff still works, but they added stuff to it. Um, like you know if you 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 can juggle people now. So if you knock someone in the air. And you're up against, you know, the edge of the screen. You can keep, you know, hitting them so long as they're airborne. Um, <laughs> you know, they added depth to the characters. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the game is modern in cool ways. Uh, one of those ways being modern usability in video games. Like there are just things that it gets. Like all the f- the favorite things that I love about my the, the best interfaces in the game. It does all those things. Like strong typographical interfaces that use art to like drive attention as opposed to you know big glitzy gamer shaped interface element with you know sharp fonts like yeah. the, like that's what doom does doom is doom is the gamer chair of video games <laughs> yes oh man it's the, the alienware laptop of computer games. <laughs> right like, it's like y'all are doing too much like okay you got You could have just charged me two thousand dollars. Video games. Just doing too much. Like I didn't need the, the the glowing alien face on the back of my computer that you upcharged me for. Wait, wait. Who, th- does the razor sell a glowing mouse pad? <laughs> and glowing. They've got glowing speakers. Mouse pad. <laughs> just threw away. He just threw away a Corsair, I, Corsair and Razer. I just saw this is a minor digression. Corsair, or Razer just made a mouse pad that's bigger than like a desk. Who the fuck are you making that for? Dude, I, I have, have a steel, steel series, series that's like, like, I don't know, it's almost like, like a foot square. square and I always felt like that thing is huge. huge. I, like I've, I've resorted back to using this, which I'm, I'm gonna get rid of. No, I'm not. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> and like. The basics, man. I, and I had this one from a. Uh, I had this this fucking stupid ass like mouse pad that I can plug up to my computer through USB, and it has like pass through on it. But it also is supposed to be like a wireless charging base, and none of that shit ever worked. So it was just a expensive ass like mouse pad. And I never actually right. thought about it, but having a USB oh, hub built, built into your mouse pad seems, seems like the perfect, perfect place to put a USB hub. Yeah, if it's well made. Until it gets in the way the first time, and then you're like, I'll take the regular mouse pad. <laughs> <laughs> right, because that, that, with, with me, like, I love the idea of it until I had it, and then, you know, it's like these big, thick-ass cords, you know, and then it has two cords. Like, why the fuck does this mouse pad need two cords? Stop. Two USB ports. <laughs> it was not one of the cords was for the wireless charging. Uh-huh. And the wireless charging didn't even work. And the wireless charging needed a dongle to hook up to something that you put on the mouse pad. So like I had to like put a dongle on my phone and then put like so like my phone was taking up the whole like <laughs> right side of my mouse pad and it didn't even work. It's like you got me, no. Corsair. You got me. Oh, it was Corsair too, huh? Mm-hmm. You still see Razor. These and my dumbass, I don't stop. Like my mouse is Corsair, my keyboard's Corsair, and all of it got RGB on it. I'm a sucker. This is what it is. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I saw your keyboard right? and all its RGB glory. So I went and got this thing on Amazon, right? Ooh, okay. And yeah, it's all so nice and nice clicky, clicky, full keyboard, RGB, wireless, wireless, the whole deal. Nice. Garbage. <laughs> Why do you get things in the box and not in my deck? Holy sh! Dude, you gotta take it back, man. I can't. I missed the Amazon window. How long did you have it sitting there? Well, well I, I used, used it for a while. while. And oh. I was, using it. And then I, was, I, was I was having, having problems, problems with something, something like, like the colors, colors weren't responding, responding the way they were supposed to. Certain, certain keys weren't lighting up. up. Like. like it was, it was almost, almost like, like the, the whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna get into it. But it broke <laughs> basically. <laughs> Damn. But, yeah. Whatever. That's what you get you for get buying a mechanical, mechanical RGB wireless, wireless keyboard, keyboard from Amazon, Amazon for sixty bucks. For, yep, that you gotta pay premium pricing for all that stuff to work. Yeah, and you, when that died, mm-hmm. you know what I went back to? The old, old Dell. Yep. <laughs> 
It works. It's, I've had this thing for like eight years. And okay. I, have, I do I have, have to admit, admit that one of the alt keys, keys has stopped stop working. So now, now I'm thinking, what's, what's my next keyboard, keyboard going to be? Mm. I thought I wanted some sweet ass minimalist mechanical, mechanical keyboard because, you know, that's what all the, all the pros, pros have. have. They're worth it. You just have to, like. Not the one I bought. You got to pay the premium, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Like I, I kind of like not, not having the uh, not having the, the numerical keypad, keypad on the side, side. you know, just, just having a narrower keyboard. keyboard. Okay, but yeah, I, I missed, missed having media keys. keys. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, know, you key combo oh, away. Yeah. That's just a pain in the ass. Yo, media keys. You should see what the media keys do to those keyboard prices, man. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, Corsair. They got like they got like ten different like keyboards and they're all minorly different and yeah, yeah. it'll be like here's this gaming mechanical keyboard um that's just the keyboard and no rgb lighting but this one has media controls and we put this little like wheel on it to where you can adjust your volume or something that's going to be an extra 60 dollars <laughs> you know who's, 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 that that back in the day? Day? who's that Dell. really <laughs> Dell had all sorts of funky, funky keyboards, keyboards with media control. Actually, I, I used to have a Microsoft thing that was, had the sprawling array, array of extra buttons all across the top. top. Included it, 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 I think it had, had, a, it had some kind of wheel, wheel on it. I think it might have actually been a scroll wheel. Uh, like, how pointless. Not every mouse had a scroll wheel back then. Oh, that's right. A long time ago. Man, there's a keyboard. I was watching a Linus video on this keyboard. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a Dell keyboard, but it was an old keyboard from like the old, you know, cream colored computer era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was a so you know all those keyboards back in the day were mechanical. And um, yeah. uh, the, the IBM something, something that, like that. Model, 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 model eighty eight or something like that. Model eighty. I used like, to have one sitting around, around here, but. I don't anymore. Like it, that might have been the one, man. I can't remember. I can't remember who made this keyboard, but it's like it's hard to find this keyboard without spending hundreds of dollars on it um, because mm. it's just it. Like Linus still feels like it's the best keyboard, like mechanical keyboard that you can get your hands on. Yeah, it's the model oh, and keyboard from IBM. That's, that's the, the, the classic, classic one, one, which is interesting. Uh, if you can get your hands on, it, you can you can buy them. You can buy them. Uh, actually, there's a company. I forget the name of it now. There's a company that makes a modern version of it. Yeah. With you know modern mechanical switches and uh but the only thing about them is they're freaking expensive. Mm hmm Because it's it's from it's those exact same ones with just like modern parts and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That shit's crazy. And I think they don't they still don't have like the uh, media keys and all that, which is annoying. Man, did you see uh there are uh, we way digress from Streets of Rage. I'll get back to it, um, <laughs> but there, uh, like old CRT monitors from that era are becoming popular with video gamers now because that's, just a, man, that's wrong. Do you think so? It's it's kind of fascinating. Um, oh, I, I agree, it's fascinating. But <laughs> fuck if I don't not have another CRT on my desk. No way, no how. Right, and. I don't, I don't care, care what we say about the refresh rates, rate, the resolution is just garbage. What, what, were, what were they playing like? So Digital Foundry has like, they, they were playing Control on uh, on it. And they were uh, they were blown away because, so it was some gross resolution, but it, it was like, what was it? Like maybe 1920 by 1200 or something like that. Like some weird boxy resolution, but like, yep. uh, but they had like, you know, they were just talking about, you know, seeing the game run with those high refresh rates and like, oh, and there's also, so there's, there it's, it's uber responsive because it doesn't have to translate, you know, the color um, and the black levels are on point because, you know, it, it's not LCD. And right, so, right. Black is right. Yeah. And so like, they're hot now. And so like you can't like it, it's nuts they're like you know remember how when it was really hard to find video cards because they were all being used for data mining and it drove the prices up 
<laughs> That's CRT monitors now. Um, I used, I used to have like, like this 21 inch Mitsubishi CRT, CRT monitor that my dad, dad like took from, from work. work. You know, you know like, like they were they were replacing a bunch of old stuff, stuff and throwing out these things. things. Uh-huh. This thing was like this big. It was huge. <laughs> it took up the whole desk. Man, but, you know, you probably make like six hundred dollars off something like that now. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. Um, I gotta go check out. I'll be right back. Okay. Yo, what's going on, y'all? I'm really excited about this content. I can't wait to tear it up and uh, get it out to the world. <clears throat> Anybody that's out there, what's, what's going on with y'all? How y'all doing tonight? We probably gonna wrap this shit up probably in the next 20, 30 minutes. Louise had these these discussions all the fucking time. Um, it's cool to actually get this shit uh get this shit on wax, so we don't have to just sit here and have these conversations to ourselves. And if there's anything y'all would like to add, by all means, please please feel free. Um, these conversations are uh, not necessarily two way street. All right, I'm back in business. Welcome back, sir. Oh, so, all right. Um, so real quick, we are about at an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to wrap this up so, sometime. Uh, yeah. yeah, we can wrap this up soon. Um, but I did, I just wanted to bring up my Streets of Rage point real quick. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so, uh, so Streets of Rage is really dope. The reason why I brought it up uh, we were talking about um, interfaces' ability to like teach you the game, or teach you a game without, you know, teaching you the game, so to speak. You know, like tutorial proper. Right. So there's a there's a button on Streets of Rage, and uh, if you press this button, it does a special attack. If you do the special attack, it takes a chunk of your life away. Hmm. And so, um, but it's a really, really powerful attack and it'll hurt any enemy that's in within the vicinity of it. Um, the new game does that and they actually tweaked it a little bit to where it's not like a guaranteed loss of your life. Um, <clears throat> you can actually like, so long as you, you land attacks without getting hit, you'll restore that life. Um, but the first time you use it, like the game doesn't tell you about this feature at all until you use it for the first time. And, you know, it's a, it's a goddamn, you know, beat em up. And so you're probably just pressing shit and you'll use yeah, it on accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time you use it, the game pauses and it tells you, hey, why is a special attack when you use it, it takes some of your life away? So beware. Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't bring it up. like So you might not use that button until maybe the third level of the game. And right. and the game will realize it and it'll, and it'll, you know, it'll give you the chance to, or it'll pretty much tell you like, okay, this is what that was, by the way. Um, but it does a cool other cool shit as well. Like when when you die, uh, it offers you the ability to spawn back into the game with assists. Um, but like it'll you know maybe hurt your final score. So like you know you're able to unlock things if you you know beat the game or beat levels under certain conditions. But like if you die and say you know you ask for an extra health, you know it's gonna cut your score in half. Um, or if you ask for three extra healths, it was gonna cut your score in three fourths. <laughs> um, yeah, but it it does it does you know it do, it just doesn't get in your way, um, and like it uses like it uses art like it, it like art and typography and like you know simple accessibility you know mm -hmm. like the things that you know the heaviest text elements on the screen are the, probably the things that you want to get people's attention on. And, you know, and it's, it's not the other way around. Or if you, if you press a button, you know, you get some sort of feedback and the game tells you what happened. You don't have to figure it out. Right. 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 Yeah, man. The game is just yeah, fucking yeah. insane. Others, that's for damn sure. sure. What's that? I said some games do that better than others. Yeah, man, we should, uh, we should play it. We gotta, uh, well, <laughs> 
What do, we got to figure out what you and I need to play through Borderlands next. Oh, okay. I'm going to that. that. Okay, cool. Because I know I'll be throwing mad games on you. Like, you got to play this and play this. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well, you know, you know we're, we're still, still not, not quite, quite back, back to the way, the way things, things were. were so, so I still have a lot of time at home. <laughs> right. I doubt things will ever go back to the way they were. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a different, different conversation for a different day. day. Uh-huh. <laughs> cool, man. Well, um, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. We covered a lot of ground today. Yeah, yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. Man. Hell yeah, I'm glad. Well, that was the motherfucking design critic. Is there anything you would uh you would like to uh to say as we piece the world out? Would you like to you know plug your shit, if you will? <laughs> I don't really have anything to plug at the moment, but uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, doing it again next time. Hell yeah, sounds good. Well, um, this has been the design critics, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed yourself um, or yourselves. Uh, English and words are important. Um, <laughs> Uh huh. But we're going to get out of here. Um, take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. Don't cough on people. <laughs> Come on, wear a mask. <laughs> right. Wear a mask, please. Like, and, and, and if you forgot your mask at home, just take your ass home and, and get, a, get a fucking mask. Like, don't take it out on that, that poor essential worker. They, they don't even want to be there. They don't want to be there. Right. They, they don't even want to see you. Like, it's just. <laughs> They'll probably give you their mask if they could, you could trade spots. So just take care of yourself. Um, all right, y'all. Y'all be easy. We're getting out of here. Take care.